Hey, I'm Kev K. I must have gone. Welcome back to I Racing and the IndyCar Fixed series. Coming off the back of our best result so far this season around Charlotte, we're at Atlanta Motor Speedway, another NASCAR track. And a track I really haven't driven in I Racing, so I'm not really familiar with. I've only driven, I believe it was the B Class NASCAR, as ages ago, or the NASCAR Nationwide cars, or the. I've forgotten what the second tier of NASCAR, NASCAR Affinity cars, that's what they're called now. But. I haven't driven it around in IndyCar, it is a bit weird, it kind of reminds me of Texas. Again, it's, you know, a very high speed circuit, a bit like Charlotte last time out. Average speed of it for a lap, if you're going quickly, you should be over 210 miles per hour. But we do have slightly different setups compared to Charlotte. You probably won't be able to kind of hog the bottom line because you actually got tire wear, it feels like. I've only done a few laps of practice, but after like five laps, the rear tires were trying to spin me around. So. I really do have to be careful with my steering input, careful with the throttle management as well, especially when I'm behind someone. And as you can see, we're starting third, had a fantastic qualifying, and just missed out on pole by seven hundredths of a se seven thousandths of a second. So that is just turning into a corner slightly late, just something wrong with my steering there, which I scrubbed too much speed into a corner. As you can see, 13 cars qualified out of 20. Two and we're the number 16 car, we're probably in the bottom split, and hopefully, we can get through here in one piece and try and get maybe a top 10 finish. I aim for because, as I said, this tire wear I'm not the best at managing the tires of the Indy car yet, as you saw around Pocono uh, in the season. So, you know, still got to develop that a lot. So, we'll see what we can do as we're just waiting to get going on the formation that. As you've got 75 laps again, just like Charlotte. And as I said, this should be very interesting. Well, it should be a very different race as well. As got itchy nose, that's always a good thing to have before a race start. As I've turned the heating off, because I expect it's going to be a long race like Charlotte, almost an hour long. These races, depending on the cautions, of course. Let's try not sit too far back from the pole, man. Maybe a couple of tents would be good. Don't want to be right behind them because if they go early, we get caught out. That would cause kind of issues behind. But we won't be too far back in case they do go. We match them, so. Just want to be in that middle area. But we're starting third. Hope we can have a good first few laps under green. Just get into a rhythm round here before the tire wear sets in. So here we go. About to go green. Just checking everything's okay. This is pace car goes in. Here we go immediately. There everyone else is stranded. So we go in third. Now I've only done two laps of practice in the slit stream and that's in the warm-up session before this session goes green. So, don't have good experience in the slit stream and it looks like they're already trying to battle for the lead. We just want to sit here though. As I said, just get into a rhythm of these first few laps. They're already majorly lifting as you can probably hear the throttle. But sit stream seems to be good, as you expect. My high speed track, so we're just trying to sit here. As I think that guy didn't expect me to check up so much. Because these two are just having a humdinger battle for the lead. Especially that guy, look at that, just hitting the white lines. And we don't really want to join in. We're holding on on the inside. Well, I say that, we just let the guy go by. We don't want to be on the inside line. That's why we're kind of just letting them go. Why we're just letting everyone battle like a hell. See, we're just four tenths behind the leaders. We don't need to be pushing so hard early on. Especially with that. 
Well, a bit too close to third. As you can see, heavy understeer in the corner. The dirty air, if you do that. But I know so we've got fifth being sensible as well. So you we can just sit here. Once you're going to bit out of the groove in three and four. It's tricky three and four because if you go too tight, the rear end will definitely try and come round in you. But every, if you see going a bit too high, you just miss the groove. And this being a NASCAR track, it's all very bumpy for Indy cars. So missing the groove means you're bumped out the outside of the course, so I'll try to avoid that. It's heavy lifting there. We really are backing up now in front. But I love how this has gone green for quite a while. Cue the caution to come out. A one and two is not too bad. A bit bumper than three and four maybe, but Not as severe. They're checking up. Has that guy got a bit too close? And this like us five have just pulled away from the pack as well. There we go, trying to manage the lifting into that final corner. So just keeping it in safe sip gear because you do still have the slip stream vaguely. And everyone's going to start spreading out soon as well. As I said, tyre is premium round here. We're getting to a better group in three and four. And there go the leaders. There's a crash. I'm not sure he's pitting, to be honest, Spotter. <laughs> I think he's out of here, unfortunately. Be interested to see if they... Now the E is also damaged. Looks like he is. Once again, we're right back in the battle for the lead. And whoa, okay. So this guy's going to knock everyone off and we're going to come through and win this thing. I think is the plan. Even though we have to lift a bit more now in one and two it feels like. Hopefully we're not pushing too hard in these early stages. As you can see the gaps behind are quite big. They're seconds instead of just being tense like you would normally expect in an IndyCar race. Good run on the leader as well. He might be damaged as well from all these clashes. He might let this guy behind go by. Seems like he's indecisive because I was lifting on the straight, just expecting him to sweep round our outside, but obviously he doesn't want to do that. Going to the final corner. That guy's really backed off behind. He's in probably here, barely throttling it in like three and four. And now major lifting in one and two because this guy is all over the place. I'm not sure if it's connection, so there's netco possibilities, but I do not want to battle them. That's all I know. I just want to sit here in their slipstream. It's a rear tyre, so for the first time, 14 laps in, starting to really feel it. Three foot. And thank God for that caution. So it's time to slow down. And that was a good green flag run. And just, just as it was getting a bit critical on the tyres, of course, caution comes out. So we're probably going to be pitting, I imagine, like everyone under this caution. And we'll be back 
There it goes green. See what we can do to the leader because as you saw with the lines, with maybe connection issues, with netcode issues, we don't really want to be battling them. So we're just to see what we could do. Maybe try and get a good restart. It's the only thing. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be just sitting behind them. So we are about to go green then. As you see, we came out in second. It's like third. Got jumped though in the pits. So let's see what we can do to the number eight car on this restart. Get ready. Going green. Let's see how we can a good green flag run like we just had as well. So I can do nothing about them. But I have held off second. Short shift up the fifth. Now to sit through three and four. And it's like there's already a gap again between the top four and everyone else. As we quickly close up, thanks to the slit stream. Two first. Once again, you can put a blanket over the top four. Already lifting quite a bit in three and four. Again, want to save those rear tyres. A bit better than we did on our first go around. Surprised there wasn't another caution. Normally, cautions breed cautions. But not on this occasion. And again, guys got that gap up to six cents again. I might have to let third and fourth go by because they look a bit quicker. And I do it this phase. And you can see a second gap to fifth already. And again, maybe the key to saving those rear tyres for three and four is just not have the steering on when we exit the corner. Just release that steering a bit earlier and be a bit gentler releasing it as well. Imagine you're steering an egg, as they would probably say. You know, like what they say about... Imagine the throttle and brake sometimes. Or hitting the brake when your driving instructor says, imagine there's an egg under there. Just be gentle with it. Right, so you are kind of letting the leader get away now. The gap's over a second, which isn't ideal. We are keeping those cars behind. Here comes third, though. Don't mind that at all. As I said, we're not that quick in this phase of the race. Again, we're just trying to manage the tyres. Rather than have this all-out speed. But again, we've seen the guy behind be cautious as well, so I wonder what he'll do if he'll try and speed by. Or not. It's also got to be careful of the camber as so I'll come out of three and four. Make sure you're not steering kind of too much against that. Can they help the tyres? So my mates were over a third of the way through this race. As you can see, we've got a two and a half second gap behind, so we can just sit in a slit stream of third, maybe, in these laps. Try and do that and just pull away from the cars behind. 
be very happy with that. That's better with through three and four. That's kind of more what I want to do. Use that kind of camber in that corner, the banking, while in the steering. Help manage the car through there. It seems like they're battling like a hell behind. Maybe that's why they're dropping back quite a lot. There you go. A bit better in the higher groove as well. Out of three and four. So approaching the halfway mark of this race. This is flying by this race. I'm very surprised. And I'm very happy as well. As you can see, driving it a bit deeper into three and four, just so we can hang on to that slipstream. As further as about a hassle second. The leader's not getting away now. Again, maybe pushing a bit too hard on the tyres. Never know. So it was very close to all. A bit too close. And so we go with, th with third. Got on the power at the wrong moment. Rear's spinning a bit there. Do not want that. And look at that, we're just 1.8 seconds behind the leader. The gap got to almost three seconds, so. Shows that maybe our strategy is paying off. There's a catch back up to third. Might have to make the move on them because they're dropping back from second now. Oh, and having big issues. With the rear tyres. Oh, he's gone into the pits, has he? And that cost us a second to the cars behind. And about a second to the cars in front as well, second and a half. Well, we saw that guy struggling five laps ago, so maybe shouldn't be too surprised that they're pitting. Clearing off. Let's run all by ourselves. Unfortunately, guys around us have slit stream, so they might be able to catch up to us fourth and fifth. And cope. As you use just fourth and fifth to get it, it looks like. But at least got that traffic in front. That should hopefully slow them down front. I know it looks like that traffic has been very nice. Good to see. Now I've got to think about fuel as well. It should help with the fuel because we are lifting around here. And we have been in the slipstream quite a lot. Very kind from that traffic as well. But we have gained a bit on second. We seem to have a bit more issues with them. That's whoa, jerking the wheel a bit too much there. You see? You have to be so kind to the car, to the tyres. Can't afford to do that. Just be gentle, very gentle. There you go, hopefully I haven't set the rear tyres. And their gap is back to around three and a half seconds behind. Which is good to see. So the gap increasing slightly. Unfortunately the gap increasing in front as well. A 
as that's my concentration noise, if you're wondering. It's 40 laps down, 35 to go. Let me just concentrate on these tyres. Don't think about the fuel at the moment. Just think about the fuel when it says five to go. But you know, in our racing, could be any moment now. We're not being too smooth through one and two. I've got to improve that. Be a bit smoother like I am into three and four. Should probably considering going down again as I'm way out of slipstream now. But again, that's a using a slightly different rev range. I understand. Gearing. Maybe that'll burn up the tyres a bit more. They're being in lower revs when we're getting on the power. Doesn't look like it though. Looks like it's helped out that. Looks like we're actually gaining back up to second. So it looks like fifth has dropped off. That charge behind has dropped off slightly. They are dealing with that traffic as well. We're gaining massively on seconds. What is going on? They really are struggling. I'm catching on first as well. Me and fourth are just charging at the moment. That's so, all. Oh, he's getting towards the wall. He's getting a bit ragged in front. Again, not being in SIP as well will affect maybe fuel as well. Because be revving a bit higher than I was in SIP. Being in fifth. Yeah, that gap is closing. It's like stabilised at that. So they're doing 26 eights. What are we doing then? 26 fives or sixes? Wolf really is trying to gain as well. So is fifth. It seems like it's kind of stabilised now, everything. Apart from that little charge, we yeah, had gaining in first and second. But the gaps behind are stable. I think it's just because we're running one and two a bit better now. Uh, as well as so you've got that traffic in front. I have to say I'm impressed with that traffic as well. Normally it can be a nightmare, but... Seem to be getting out of the way very well. Good to see some good behaviour, shall we say. I mean, it's like first and second have really closed up, thanks to it. Again, steering too much there. As we've got a third of the race to go. So the leader's pitting in. So Phil obviously can't go to the end then, can it? We might have to pit now then. Kind of respond. The leader's pitting now. 
So yeah, we can't let first have too many laps on fresh tyres over us. He's probably already gained like a second on us, just by pitting earlier. Nice to be able to see my pits though, in pit lane for once. Bit too cautious though. So this might cost us time in the pits. Yeah, it cost us a few tenths. But hey, we learned from Kentucky and the hikes. Pitting on time. Got a very slow car in front. Oh, that's the leader. Okay. Obviously, not a good idea staying out. And I'm guessing the guy in front pitted the lap early as well as they have jumped us. So we're down to seventh for the time being. But again, we might be able to stay in their slipstream now. Oh no, that's, he, of course he jumped us because he pitted many, many laps before us. Being a bit an idiot there, I forgot that he pitted way before us. So he could actually hold us up then, maybe. And I'll battle with net P2. So he is struggling. Great run, but there's nothing I can do there. There's no gap to aim for. There you go, smoothly done it. Now let's see if we can chase. After third, we've lost like five seconds in all of that. As they're running hard on their fresh tyres, we haven't been able to. I hope for they've run their tyres a bit too hard. So maybe catch them towards the end. Never know. So that we've already got a three and a half second gap behind again. But it's nice having tyres that feel like they grip. It's all someone spun. As far as there's no caution. Or a stop, should I say. And it looks like because of that traffic. Where's the leader in all of this? One guy hasn't pitted yet, I'm guessing. Yep, yeah, so we're back into third. And the guy in front's got that traffic in front, so you can just sit in slipstream get dragged around. Well, he could, at least, until they pitted. Oh, no, they haven't pitted yet. Oh, he's actually... No, he's not the leader in front. Come on, where's the other guy? Did he have to pit again? So he could be set for the next second. He's actually out! So the previous leader is out. We're in second. And caution is out. It's all changed. We've got to sprint to the finish now. What the hell? What happened there? And I probably wouldn't have liked the sprint to the finish because I was sitting quite comfortably in second. 
and felt like I was managing my tyres better then at least second he's actually did not pit did he so he's actually been given a big relief or he did pit earlier maybe but now everyone's going to pit everyone's going to be on a level playing field we're going to have like 10 laps left it's going to get crazy and so here we are preparing to go green and you'll see the number one car is in first remember they were the leader after we came out the pits for four, a few laps so they're on slightly older tyres but still I imagine no good till the end depends how much I have to manage them because they're only like 10 laps older than our tyres because they really stretched that stint not a good restart oh, look at that move on the outside Four seconds cracking move let's see how hard we can push these tyres then in 10 laps as he's taking the lead oh the number requires has to slow down a lot and 3 and 4 so that's good, not good for their chances then as he's getting swamped around the outside next stop is us as he looked down the inside I was a bit late there but it's go time I had to make the move if I want to win this so she didn't see the top two around the second in front now and they're battling hard look at first weaving a bit that's not good to see on an oval shouldn't be doing that but if they battle we can catch up then oh it's all the cautions out Are you kidding So now it might be a one or two that sprint to the finish. We'll see. Uh, let's go through my pace car. Ooh. That was freaky. No point really pitting. That could be a break from the number one car though. Because they could have the freshest tyres. Now. Well, everyone else will probably stay out. And indeed, they have pitted behind. So this is going to be madness on this restart. Five laps to go. Freshish tyres still. I know I think we've only got one lap of maybe pushing him hard. So hopefully it's just a one lap shootout. If it's two, you could see quite a few crashes on the final lap maybe. From people not backing up too much. Or me just spinning in the final corner probably. We'll see. So it is a two lap sprint to the finish. How much of that two lap sprint we do, I have no idea. It might just last one corner. It might not even last the restart for the way the guy behind has been acting. Under the pace car. But we'll see. In a podium spot at the moment, trying to get our second consecutive third place finish, our second consecutive podium. For the first time in ages, in years. As guy, you're not giving me the chance to actually get up here now. As let's see what we can do then.
I had no choice. The guy buggered up the restart. So I let him buy to the Jitney battle for the win. I'm probably going to get disqualified now, aren't I? There was nothing I could do there apart from hash on the brakes and let everyone else, you know, crash. As uh, so it's like, number 10 is held on. Right onto them. What, after the checkered flag? Okay. I've never had this happen in I racing, so what happens then? Do I get disqualified then? Or can I just take it now? I know the checker flag is gone, but I may get into the pits and stop and go. Let's see what happens. There's someone retired. Hopefully that was after the chicken flow, I think that was. Okay, the race is over, bring it on in. So I'm here now then. Because there's nothing I could do apart from make everyone crash behind if I served the penalty. So it looks like we dropped down to nine, so it looks like we dropped to the end of the lead lap. But I hope you enjoyed a good race round Atlanta apart from the last restart. <laughs> Still, I aimed for a top 10 finish at the beginning, so I achieved it at least. Well, I really wanted a top 5, which I would have got. I would have got a podium. But in the end, you know, it was a good race. Definitely have improved, it seems like, the managing the tyres. But again, that was high speed. It didn't require brakes like it did around Pocono. So we'll see when we go back there next season if I have improved, really. But I hope you enjoyed a sprint and tactical race at the same time. Sound for watching and I will see you next time.